Hi, I'm Jim Ward, and I'd like to welcome you to Episode 6 in our History Bites series. Today, we will discuss the history of America's largest national cemetery at Arlington, Virginia. Arlington Estate was established by George Washington's adopted grandson, George Washington Park Custis, to be a living memorial to the first president. The plantation is located on a hilltop overlooking the Potomac River and Washington, D.C. Custis inherited the 1,100-acre plantation from his father at the age of 21 in 1802. He built Arlington House, a Greek Revival-style mansion on the property as a tribute to George Washington and filled the home with many of Washington's belongings. Custis's daughter, Mary, married U.S. Army First Lieutenant Robert E. Lee in 1831. When he died, Custis left the estate to his daughter, Mary Custis Lee, for the duration of her life, and upon her death, her eldest son would inherit the property. Robert E. Lee served as the executor of his father-in-law's will and never owned the property. It was here in April 1861 where Robert E. Lee debated whether he should remain with the Union or side with his home state of Virginia and the Confederacy. After the Lees abandoned the property at the start of the Civil War, the U.S. Army seized Arlington Estate on the morning of May 24, 1861 to defend Washington, D.C. From the, po from the property's heights, rifled artillery could range every federal building in the nation's capital. The estate was seized not to punish the Custis Lee family, but rather for its strategic value. Three forts were built on the property during the Civil War, Fort Cass, Fort Whipple, and Fort McPherson. Beginning in June 1863, a large freedman's village established for freed and escaped slaves was established as well. Later on in the war, the property was declared in default. An auction took place on January 11, 1864. The sole bid came from the federal government, which offered $26,800, well under the estate's assessed value of $34,100. According to the, to the certificate of sale, Arlington's new owner intended to reserve the property for, gov quote, for government use, for war, military, charitable, and educational purposes, end quote. In 1864, due to the rising number of Civil War dead, Montgomery Meigs, who was appointed Union Quartermaster General during the Civil War and also was Army Cemetery Superintendent, recommended Lee's 200-acre estate at Arlington to be made into a new national cemetery for Civil War soldiers. Meigs had served under Lee before the war, shared a cabin during their service together, and admired Lee, but his admiration soon turned to hatred once the Civil War commenced. Meggs considered Lee a traitor for resigning and going to the Confederacy. Still bitter that Lee had chosen to, le to leave the Union Army and lead the Confederate forces, Meggs even ordered the Rose Garden near the house to be lined with graves. Twenty-six headstones stand there today, a grim reminder of Meggs' wrath. Over the years, the house was also used as a plantation estate and home to 63 slaves. It was a military headquarters and a community for emancipated slaves in a national cemetery. Arlington officially became a national cemetery on June 15, 1864 by order of Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. The original cemetery was 200 acres and has since grown to 639 acres. Private William Christman of Pennsylvania was the first military service member buried at Arlington on May 13, 1864. Christman was a farmer, newly recruited into the army. He fell ill with the measles and died several days later of complications before ever going into combat. Initially, being buried at a national cemetery was not considered an honor, but it ensured that service members whose families could not afford to bring them home for a funeral were given a proper burial. The first official Decoration Day, later renamed Memorial Day, was held at Arlington National Cemetery on May 30, 1868. This tradition continues today and is one reason why Arlington transformed from being one of many national cemeteries into a premier national military cemetery. 
The event was so popular that in 1873, an amphitheater was constructed to hold the official ceremonies. In 1899, the U.S. government began repatriating, at its own expense, service members who died overseas in the Spanish-American War. Arlington National Cemetery consequently expanded to include sections 21, 22, and 24. After World War I, more than 2,000 U.S. service members were repatriated to Arlington National Cemetery and interred in sections 18 and 20. In 1900, Congress authorized a designated section for Confederate soldiers, at a time when the nation was trying to reconcile after the Civil War. The Confederate section, Section 16, contains the graves of 482 veterans and spouses. The headstones in this portion are pointed, with a common explanation being they were designed this way to keep Unionists from sitting on them in disrespect. The cemetery's official explanation is that the aesthetic was chosen simply to set these graves apart from those belonging to the 400,000 other individuals buried at Arlington. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is a monument at Arlington National Cemetery dedicated to unidentified U.S. service members who died in the line of duty. It is considered the most hallowed grave at Arlington National Cemetery. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was dedicated on November 11, 1921 during an Armistice Day ceremony commemorating World War I veterans. President Warren G. Harding presided over the ceremony. The ornate marble sarcophagus completed in 1932 reads, Here rests in honor glory an American soldier known but to God. The unknown soldier of World War I was exhumed from a military cemetery in France and buried with highest honors beside the Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington. A two-inch layer of soil brought from France was placed below the coffin. The World War I unknown was later joined by the unidentified remains of soldiers from World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. However, in 1998, the remains of the Vietnam Unknown were exhumed and identified by scientists as those of Air Force First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blasey, who was shot down near An Loc, Vietnam in 1972. Blasey's remains were returned to his hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. The crypt that contained the Vietnam Unknown remains vacant. 24 hours a day, soldiers from the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, known as the Old Guard, stand watch over the tomb. The tomb guards, also called Sentinels, are chosen for this prestigious and highly selective post only after rigorous training and a demanding series of examinations. The Old Guard has held this distinguished duty since 1948. The tomb guard marches exactly 21 steps down the black mat behind the tomb, turns, faces east for 21 seconds, turns and faces north for 21 seconds, then takes 21 steps down the mat and repeats the process. The number 21 symbolizes the highest military honor that can be, that can be bestowed, the 21-gun salute. On one of his visits to Arlington National Cemetery in March of 1963, just eight months before his assassination, President Kennedy paid a visit to Arlington House, which was recently renamed the Robert E. Lee National Memorial. The president was a big history buff, and he relished the chance to walk in the same room where General Lee had decided to resign from the army that he had served for 30 years. Upon leaving the house, Kennedy soaked up the spectacular view of the cemetery as well as the capital city, purportedly stating, I could spend forever here. After Kennedy's assassination on November 22, 1963, when asked about where JFK was to be buried, his wife Jacqueline, who was informed of her husband's words, stated, He belongs to the people. Nearby Arlington Cemetery is another stunning memorial, the U.S. Marine Corps War Memorial. Based on an iconic image of the second flag raising on the island of Iwo Jima during World War II, it is dedicated to the Marine dead of all wars and their comrades of other services who fell fighting beside them. While the statue depicts one of the most famous incidents of World War II, the memorial is dedicated to all Marines who have given their lives in defense of the United States since 1775. 
There are 142 national cemeteries in 40 states and Puerto Rico. We have two here on Long Island, Calverton National Cemetery and Long Island National Cemetery in Farmingdale. Arlington is the country's largest military cemetery and serves as the final resting place for more than 400,000 military veterans and their immediate family from the fronts of Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as World Wars I and II, the Korean conflict, Vietnam, the Cold War, and America's Civil War. As a result, the history of our nation is reflected on the grounds of the cemetery. Thank you everyone for joining me for today's episode, and remember this Memorial Day, all those who served and sacrificed for our nation. Thank you.